Good. Good. Well, I'm, I'm excited. Who, is it, can anybody tell me the, the mission statement of LEAD? Does anybody know or heard the mission statement of our program? No, but that is really... Tell me your name. Jacob. Jacob. Um, that is kind of a, a quote that we built our program around, and the mission statement definitely relates to that. Um, it's kind of in the same family, maybe. How about that, Jacob? Yeah, that's, close. <laughs> that's close. Anybody else? Nobody's going to want to guess now after that. <laughs> What's that? McKenna. You were at the listening seminar, right? Yes. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Fill her in, Katie. Um, the mission statement is to be the best organization in the world at helping people develop the skills and character they need to achieve their goals in life. Right? To be the best organization in the world at helping people develop the skills and character they need to achieve their goals in life. You can smile now, right? <laughs> um, all right, so what, we, what Peter said, seven laws of lifetime growth. Um, who's been involved in growing? Anybody recently? Anybody today? Anybody do anything today that they want to share? No? Conquer any fears? Um, growth, I, I'll, share, I'll share this with you before we get too started. My, gro growing has been a big deal in my family of late. I have, I have three boys. Um, I have a 16-year-old, 14-year-old, and 12-year-old. Um, my 16-year-old just got his license a week and a half ago, so it's been a very growing experience for his mother and I. We have, that, has been, that has been an incredible experience, let me tell you. Um, also, sports is a big deal in my family. Any of you guys grow up in families where you play a lot of sports? Any you guys? Um, we're, we're, our, my kids play all kinds of sports, but one thing that's, that's big is football. I'm a football coach in the town that we live. I, I coach high school football. And my, my sixth grader... Um, wanted to play middle school football. And we have a rule, or my wife has a rule, that you have to weigh 90 pounds in order to be able to play foot, middle school football because it's 6th, 7th, and 8th graders, and it's, it's full-on tackle football. And some of the 8th graders that we play against in Montana, they're farm boys. I mean, we played against some 8th graders that are like 6'2", weigh 190 pounds, right? So she has this rule where you got to be at least 90 pounds. So when my son first got on the scale... He was not very happy because he came up at, at 82 pounds, so he needed to grow, right? So we got out a growth book for him, and we developed some plan of actions, and he had a plan to eat six meals a day, right? Milkshakes and, and the whole deal to be able to get up to 90 pounds. Um, now, are any of you guys people, some of you guys probably like this, where you can eat and eat and eat, and it'll have like absolutely zero impact on your body? Is it? We, got, we got four or five. Austin is that kid. I mean, this kid was on this great schedule. He ate and ate and ate and ate and ate. And the, I mean, he got on the scale and it barely moved, right? Now, long story short, dad overruled mom. Austin gets to play football. And I figured I'd show you what it looks like. Here's Austin. Um, and here's a lot of the kids that we played against. Um, however, Austin is uh, he's very talented. He was our quarterback. We went four and two, and it was a great season, right? So, I, I, but I do want to be a little bit more serious and, and talk about growing. Um, because growth is, why is it important to grow? Why, why is that relevant? Who was talking? It's adapting. It's adapting. Okay. Yeah, it's not very inspiring if you don't, right, McKenna? I mean, how many of you guys would be fired up to know that you would be the same person you are right now in 10 years? Or 20 years? Somebody's going, I like myself. I'd be good with that. <laughs> here's, here's a couple. I, I think growth equals success. Anyone who stops learning is old. Whether they're 20 or 40 or 60 or 80, anyone who keeps learning stays young. I've met a lot of 80-year-olds who are young at heart. This is by Henry Ford. Intellectual growth should commence at birth and cease only at death. Albert Einstein said that. There's nothing more notable in Socrates than that he found time when he was an old man to learn how to play music and dance and thought it was time well spent. And then Socrates himself said, education is the kindling of a flame, not the filling of a vessel, right? And in growth, in growth hard sometimes, a lot of times our decisions about growth will dramatically influence our future, you know? I'll give you an idea, like when I was in school, I went to school at the University of North Carolina. Anybody ever heard of that school? We used to play basketball there. 
Um, now we've been surpassed by schools like San Diego State University in, in terms of basketball. But anyway, we're, we're going to come back. Um, but I, when I was a freshman at, at the University of North Carolina, I had a lot of fun. I don't, I don't know if you guys, any of you guys had fun in college. I mean, I had, I had a ton of fun. I, I went to class sometimes. Um, <laughs> You know, we had this great place called Franklin Street, had all these bars and restaurants, and, and I got a minor there. And um, we had, I mean, there was definitely a co-ed you know, co environment in North Carolina, and I had a blast with that too. I mean, it was just, just a fun experience. So when it came time to my, my summer of my, after my freshman year, I remember I had a decision to make. I had, I had this one opportunity to go to this place called Hilton Head, South Carolina. Has anybody ever heard of Hilton Head? It's kind of a resort island. It's made up of, of all kinds of resort hotels where people go on vacation. And I had an opportunity to work at a resort hotel. I would have been the assistant to the events coordinator, which um, what that means is like there's a guy that plans like water aerobics, you know, for old people and stuff and excursions. And I would have been his assistant. You know, it would have been a lot of fun. Would have been at the beach. It would have been with, with people I knew. Would have been at the beach. Probably would have looked good on a resume. Would have been at the beach. You know, it was been a lot, a lot of fun. And then I had this, this other opportunity to work with the Southwestern Advantage program in the summer where you run your own business and add value to families by showing them educational solutions. Hard, a uh, lot of rejection, a lot of hard work, but, but an opportunity to really grow and develop myself. And those, those decisions about growth a lot of times are tough. Um, obviously, I'm here 26 years later, so, so I made the decision to grow that year, and, and I've never looked back. It's been the most impact, other, other than the decision to, to, to try to marry my wife, it's been the most impactful decision that I've ever made. I did succeed, by the way. Um, <laughs> it just took a while for me to convince her. Um, anyway, um, but it's been the most impactful decision. 26 years later, it's been great. So I wanted to share, like Peter said, seven laws of lifetime growth. And I need to, you need to remind me, I need to go quicker than I did last time. Uh, I'll leave some stuff out, and um, we'll go faster. But I don't. Uh, I had a handout, and we used them all. We had such a, a crowd. You what? Oh, let's just do this. Here we go. This will be helpful. We'll just give like one a table. How about that? And if you want, you can take a picture of it, and then you can uh, fill in um, some stuff. Here, you pass some of them out. We'll put two at the table. How about that? You can grab these. You can share. Uh, give Gabby one. Where's my notes? I got some notes so I don't so I don't screw up. Don't worry, I'll screw up some. All right. So um, and you can take notes if you want. You could use this for toilet paper if you want. I don't, I don't care. I, hopefully you'll get something out of this, and uh, I promise we'll have some fun. All right. You guys ready? All right. Let me share. So, first, first law of lifetime growth, right? Always make your future bigger than your past, right? Always make your future big. How many of you guys, you know, talking about PDA cell phone, how many of you guys remember the very first cell phone that you had? Anybody remember that? What was it? Chocolate. Chocolate? All right. How, how cool and cutting edge was that, right? And now look at how far things have come in that industry. You had a razor. Um, I mean, look at, look at how far. You always want to make your future greater than your past. You always want to look forward, strive higher, go further, right? Now, does everybody do this? Not necessarily. Anybody know anybody that's kind of like stuck in the past? Anybody have any friends that... You know, the glory days and the good, and all they talk about is high school. Or, yeah, I mean, you want to you wanna develop a mentality where your future is greater than your past. I, I wrote this down. This is, uh, you can internalize this. Make a habit of approaching life as if everything up till this point was just the beginning. And then from right now, it's the springboard to your future. So everything up till now is just the beginning to get you ready for the springboard for the next step. Always make your future bigger than your past. Okay, next one. I'm, well, I'll, flip, I'll go back. Always make your contribution bigger 
than your reward. Right? Who's that? Bill Gates. How about that one? That one? Yep. Anybody know what they all have in common? <laughs> they do give back. Of all the, of all the performing artists, um, this year and last year, Taylor Swift gave away more money than anybody else. You know, Bill Gates, several years, he's been the most philanthropic person on the planet. You know, Oprah, the same thing, you know. If you constantly focus on what you give to the community, you will have plenty of rewards that will follow. Always make your contribution greater than your reward. And um, I think if you look for ways to create value and add value for other people, things will go pretty darn good for you. Now, I was skiing on Saturday, right? I live in Big Sky, Montana, if anybody's ever heard of that place. It's, it's a fun ski resort, so I ski every weekend. But there was eight inches of snow um, Friday night, so Saturday was a sweet day to hit the slope. So I'm, I'm there in line at the lift line. There really weren't any lift lines, but I, I looked over at the board that the lifties, the lifties write on the board every morning. They'll write the temperature and the snow, and then they'll, like, shred the pow. So I, I look over there, and I did a double take at what was written there Saturday morning, and I thought, oh my gosh, that is, that is perfect for what I'm going to talk about with these laws of lifetime growth. So I, I look, I'll, I'll share this with you. It said, if your quest is for glory, it may be a sad story. If your quest is to care, there will be glory to share. And I thought that was, oh, I thought two things. I was like, one, what were those guys smoking this morning to get that deep? <laughs> But the other thing I said is that, that was really profound, you know. If your quest is for glory, it may be a sad story. If your quest is to care, there will be glory to share. I'm, and I've, I am very thankful. This, this really fits, you know, what, what I've had the opportunity to do the last 25 years is, is just that, is, is to have an impact and give back. I mean, like to watch Peter get up and speak in front of the group for me is awesome. I mean, I met him when he was a senior in high school and, he couldn't have led a group in silent prayer if we prepped for a week, you know. Um, and, I, and I think he would be the first to admit that. And to, to watch him become a leader of people is, is so powerful. Um, so anyway, um, the, uh, yeah, next one. Always make your learning greater than your experience. Now, this take some like kind of thinking through to make sense here right because this question right here is experience the best teacher uh, is it can be but if that were the case would anybody ever make the same mistakes over and over and over Does anybody know somebody that makes the same mistakes over and over and over and over. So experience alone is not necessarily the best teacher. Experience has to be involved with questioning what to draw from the experience, what worked, what didn't, and changing because of the experience. So there's, there's the experience and then the learning that comes from the experience, if that makes sense. It, to, give you, to give you an idea, I, um, I, I worked in the Southwestern Advantage program. And my freshman year, in, you know, in the summer, what, what I decided to do to hit my goals was to go see 30 families in a day, right? And figure out how to add value. So it was this giant science experiment, if you will. Because in, you guys understand, in, in, every, in every equation, there's constants and some variables, right? Right? Well, there were, there were all these constants, and the one variable was me, right? My attitude my heart, you know, whether I was focused on other people or I was focused on me, whether I, whether I smiled or not. And it was amazing the impact of the experience and what I could learn and how to coach myself and to get better. It was one of the, it was like the most intense learning experience because I did over and over and, and from this science experiment. It was, it was profound. I learned how to, you know, I learned how to interact with people. I learned how to read people. I learned how to understand. I learned how to relate how to gain people's trust, how to, how to you know, be able to have them share with me so that I could add value and impact their life. It was a really cool experience. I mean, if you, uh, 
if you will form the habit of letting go of your experiences once you have them, right? Because anybody know anybody that hangs on to experiences that happen? You know, you have to let them go once you've learned everything so that you can make your future greater than your past and move forward, right? Anyway, all right, number four. Don't get by, oh, I forgot my sweet thing. Sucking at something is sometimes the first step and then being sort of good at something comes next, right? All right, number four. Always make your performance greater than your applause. Always make your performance greater. All right, so here's what we're going to do. I want you to get together with the person next to you and see if you can decipher what this one means. I'll give you 30 seconds. Go. Got an answer? Survey says? Survey says. I'm Chris. I'm Autumn. Hi, nice to meet you. Autumn, you've watched The Family Feud? Yes. I am impressed. And what's your name? Stephanie. Stephanie. Uh -huh. Chris Samuel. Do you guys know each other? Yeah. We've known each other for 15 to 5. Oh my gosh. Uh, that sounds like a story. All right. Let's back together. Who, anybody, anybody got a good, uh, good meaning for this? <laughs> she is brave. I like it. You're persistent. Oh, okay. McKenna, go ahead. It doesn't matter how many people you're talking to, always make it like huge and meaningful. I like that. I think that's, that's on the right track. That's pretty profound. Yeah. Here's, here's my analogy for you and see if anybody can relate to this. So the first test of the semester, you kind of study a little bit and you get an A. And then what might happen the rest of the semester? You don't study. You suck up. And why wouldn't you study? What would you tell yourself? Yeah, I'm good at this. I'm over, you know. Whatever. I guess if you will focus on you as opposed to the outside world, here's where this comes into play. I think if, if you, get, especially if you continue in the lead program or you guys just for, just for being here and having the desire to grow, I have confidence that the people in this room will, will accomplish a tremendous amount. I mean, you will impact a great number of people. You will experience a lot of success. And while that happens, you need to stay focused on doing your best as opposed to worrying about what the outside world. I mean, here's the traps that you can fall into. I made it, right? Anybody ever heard of a sophomore slump in sports? What, is, what does that mean? No. But... I made it as a freshman, yeah. Yeah, you made it as a freshman. Everybody's like, oh, wow, you made it as a freshman. You're that good. And then people can get, like you said, the ego cat. Can, you can get a big head and you get cocky and then... You get complacent, exactly. Yeah. The, the entitlement, you know, the sense of, you know, there, there are some, some artists that, you know, they, all they do is they perform for the applause as opposed to performing for themselves, you know, for the sake of doing their best, for, you know, for the, the sake of the gratification of doing your best at what you do. Anybody watch, uh, any of you guys watch the Olympics? Hopefully some. Anybody watch um, slope style skiing? Men's, you may see that. We did pretty well, and, or slope style snowboarding, uh, men's snowboarding. You know who won? It's an American. Sage Kotzenberg. Um, he was on all the radio shows and stuff, and he was a perfect example of somebody. He didn't do the biggest trick. He didn't do what the audience was going to go nuts over, but he, ski, you know, he, he rode, he was a snowboarder, he rode the best ride 
out there, and he loved what, while he was doing it. You know, he just said at the end, man, I just did it. And the judges rewarded him, not because he got the biggest applause, but because he was the best in the sense of did his best and enjoyed it the most. Great, great example of, of what I'm talking about. So, anyway, make your performance greater. For performing for the love of what you do, regardless of how it's received, is something is, uh, that, that adds to lifelong success, right? All right. Next one, always make your gratitude greater than your success. Always make your gratitude. What this is, this is what's called a gratitude list. Have any of you guys been in a situation where you were feeling down or you're depressed or things weren't going your way? One of the best exercises that you can do is to get out a pen and a piece of paper and write out all the things you're thankful for. You know, thank you for my health, and thank you for my family, and thank you for my children, and thank you for the opportunities, thank you for the chance to live in a country where you have the opportunity to do whatever you do, have an education, and all of a sudden, you will start to feel better. And you will stop the pity party that you're having for yourself. You know? Having an attitude of gratitude is so powerful. I, one of the, you know, one of my mentors is a guy named Dan Moore who um, is actually going to come speak here at SDSU in April. Phenomenal individual. He's president of Southwestern Advantage. And he is the most grateful person I've ever met um, in my life. I mean, whether it is at the cafeteria when somebody's serving him food, or it is lobbying in front of Congress, or it's meeting with a student, or it's playing the piano, he has an incredible thankful attitude. And it's, it, it, just, it just inspires everybody around him. And if you can make you know, exactly what it says, your gratitude greater than your success, that will set you up for what very few people in this world have is a very long-term success where you have a chance to impact a lot of people. So, number six. All right. Make your enjoyment greater than your effort. How are we doing on time? Good? Okay. Enjoyment greater than effort, right? Work. School work, work work, working out, whatever it is. There's three ways people view things, right? The first way is I resent this. I have to work. I have to run. I have to do my school work, right? The second way people do that is I work hard because it gives me status and rewards, right? Which is definitely better than the first one. However, the last one is I love what I do because I decided to. And that is the most healthy man the attitude to have. I love what I do because I decided to. Now, I told you earlier that um, I was not exactly the uh, most dedicated student my whole college career. I did get my best grades at the end. I was very proud of that. Um, however, I graduated, I had a 2.96 GPA. I would encourage you to do better than that. <laughs> however, I'll, I'll share with you, my rationalization for my performance academically, at rational, this was a powerful rationalization. I was pretty good at rationalizing. Um, what I told myself was that I just did not like to study, right? And if I liked to study, it would be different and I would do better. And people that had better GPAs, friends that I had three sevens, three eights, three nines, a couple that had four us, they did better because they liked to study. And then that was okay and made it all okay, right? One semester at the end of my college career, I decided to go study with my buddy Brian Kurtz, one of my fraternity brothers. He graduated with a 397, went to Harvard Law School, it was, you know, brilliant, but worked really hard, studied all the time. I figured if I went to the library and he went to the library, my grades have got improved, <laughs> you know? So I did. I went to the library, resenting it some of the time, you know, and I'd watch, and he'd just, like, be super engaged and, you know, study all the time, and, and I said, what's your deal? You just like to study, you know? And he goes, no, shut up. I, I, you know, it's not, but I just decided I'm doing it. I'm going to get good grades. Nobody's making me be here. And I remember thinking, wow, that's, that's a totally different attitude than I have. You know? But if you will love what you do because you decide to, and always make your enjoyment better than your, more important than your effort, 
it will be a powerful experience. Now, last law of growth, right? Let me see if I skipped anything good. Nope. All right. Here's the picture for you. Always make your confidence greater than your comfort. Always make your confidence greater than your comfort. These two are intertwined, right? Everybody understand this concept called a comfort zone? We all have a comfort zone, right? You know? It's usually we kind of settle into a comfort zone. How many of you guys are freshmen? How many are sophomores? Juniors? Any seniors? Okay. How's your comfort zone now compared to when you were a freshman? Way bigger. <laughs> you have to force yourself to get out of that comfort zone, don't you? Because you get so comfortable. Let, let me give you an idea. We, we, either, we either deal with short-term uncomfortableness or we learn to live with long-term uncomfortableness, right? I'll give you an analogy. You've got a roommate and they like smell. <laughs> they never shower. They don't ever do the dishes, right? Piled up in the sink, right? So, you have a choice, right? You can either confront the situation, which would be anybody not like confrontation? How many of you guys don't like, I mean, it would be really uncomfortable, right? Hey, dude, let me, let me take this shower thing that we invented. <laughs> this would be really, you know, that would be very uncomfortable. Or... You could learn to live with the smell and the dishes and get frustrated and finally do the dishes yourself, and that will be uncomfortable for the long term. Short-term uncomfortableness always pushes you out of your comfort zone, always causes you to grow. And where the confidence part fits in, how many of you guys have ever, like, had a tough conversation with somebody, you know, where you were super, like, I don't want to do this, and then what happens after you do it? You feel better, right? You have more self-esteem. You have more confidence. Every time you take on a challenge outside your comfort zone, you volunteer for something, you raise your hand in class when you don't feel comfortable and you do it, you, you overcome these, you build your confidence and then your confidence becomes much greater than your comfort. You guys with me on that? Yes. Now, here's the tricky part. Anybody have a guess as to the biggest influence whether we venture outside this comfort zone or not? What? Other people's thoughts and what other people's judgment. Fear. There is fear, but whether we conquer fear or not has everything to do with what she said. When I was a sophomore, I learned in class, and this is very true, I had a professor that told me that the person you become is influenced by two things. One is the books that you read, and two is the people you hang around. Right? I didn't read any books in college because, you know, outside of school. Um, and that is a good habit to get into, which you should. But the people we hang around, think about it. If your friends study, you study. You're more likely to study. If your friends party, you're more likely to party. If your friends, you know, are honest and ethical, you're more likely to be honest and ethical. If your friends aren't honest and ethical, you're more likely to bend kind of the, the honesty and ethical. If, you know, like in my situation, if my friends were all choosing to do something fun for the summer and enjoyment, it would have been more e easier for me to do that. If my friends were choosing to take on a challenge, you know, like I did with the Southwestern Advantage, I would be more likely to do it. Your friend, you know, who you hang around is super impactful. And I think that is the greatest thing about the LEAD program because it puts you in an environment, if you choose to, to be around people that are choosing to grow, that are choosing to get outside their comfort zone. And that's a great group to be a part of. Right? So, I know Peter's yelling at me. I babbled too long. Here's what I do want you to do. Look down at your paper. Look down at whoever has the paper. Because there is, there is a common theme in all seven of these. Right? Anybody, anybody sense a, a theme? Bigger. Bigger and greater. Kind of moving in the right direction. Anything else? Always. <laughs> the word always. <laughs> um, here's, the, here's the theme I'll share with you. All of them are focused on the process more than the result, right? 
Focus more on the process, the process that you can control, the process that's within your ability. It's kind of the, you know, your analogy for school would be focusing on studying and doing your best as opposed to spending all this mental energy worrying about the grade at the end, right? Because when you're focused on the process, usually your heart's in the right place, you have a big impact on other people, and you come closer to reaching your potential. So it's been exciting to be here. I know I probably talked too long.